Tesla just released their 2018 Q3 results and they did it. They achieved profitability to the tune of $312 million, which is up from a $700 million loss in Q2. But there's a lot more to unpack here. And first, I wanted to take you on a little road trip through Tesla's financial history. Tesla went public on January 29th of 2010 amidst the financial recovery and without their flagship sedan, the Tesla Model S. It wasn't until June 22nd of 2012 did they finally start to deliver their first real production car, which would really drive their growth and solidify them as a contender in the luxury auto space. Prior to that, the only Tesla in existence was the original Roadster, which was converted from the Lotus Elise sports car. While this was a cool concept and captured the attention of many environmentally friendly celebrities like George Clooney, it proved to be somewhat of a bad approach, and thus Tesla went back to the drawing board with their new chief designer, Franz Volhalshausen, who has a very German-sounding name but actually grew up in Connecticut. And as it turns out, building your flagship sedan takes a lot of resources, time and money, people, everything coming together. And Tesla at the time didn't really have much of a track record of success. During this time, Tesla was spending far more money than they were making to the tune of a $106 million loss in Q2 of 2012 and $111 million loss in Q3 of 2012. This is when the tide began to shift for Tesla. As Tesla started to deliver the Model S in late Q3 of 2012, the revenue took off, doubling in that quarter alone and growing again by over 500% the following quarter. This growth led to Tesla seeing its first profitable quarter in Q1 of 2013 to the tune of $11 million. In early 2012, Tesla also unveiled their SUV, the Model X. And of course, this again took quite a bit of money to start building. So after that profitable quarter there in 2013, as Tesla began to build up the supply lines and all the equipment and everything for the Model X, again, they went into the red in terms of profitability. This time they were spending far more than they previously had though, as they had some major expenses during this time, giving them a negative net income of over $300 million in Q4 of 2015. But again, as the Model X delivery started to ramp up, so did the revenue as well as the net income. This gave Tesla their second profitable quarter in Q3 of 2016, this time doubling the previous profitable quarter, now to the tune of $22 million of net income. But as you can probably imagine, Tesla and Elon had a lot more in the works. The Tesla Model 3, the first mass market electric car from Tesla with a price that many more can afford than the previous two models, was unveiled on March 31st of 2016, allowing people to put down deposits. At this time, thousands around the globe stood in line at stores, sometimes even in the rain, to put down a deposit on a vehicle that they wouldn't see for at least two years. In the following days, hundreds of thousands of more people did the same online and in stores. And I want to just to pause a second to talk about this because this is something that is really unprecedented. Yes, in the early days of the iPhone with Apple, people would wait in line for very long periods of time to get their hands on one or to be one of the first. However, in all of those cases, you left the store with the phone. You actually received it right then and there. In this scenario, you had thousands of people lined up at stores all around the world where you'd have to still wait for up to two years or more to receive the car. Some people to this day, everybody in Europe, for example, is still waiting on the car that they put a deposit down over two and a half years ago. That's unprecedented. And of course, during this time, Tesla also had to reconfigure their general assembly plant in Fremont, California, along with build out large sections of the battery factory in Nevada. And as you can imagine, those things cost quite a bit of money and they used a large amount of capital and thus Tesla's profitability again sunk to new lows. In Q2 of 2018, Tesla produced their largest loss to date, spending $718 million more million than they brought in. At the same time, the top line revenue figure grew to its largest in company history, over $4 billion. 
Gross profit also shot back up to $619 million, giving a better than expected earnings per share figure, which led to the stock performing fairly well over this period. This brings us to today, when Tesla announced their Q3 2018 financial results. And these numbers are pretty incredible. First, you have net income, where Tesla posted a $312 million profit, which is a 143.5% increase from last quarter, where they had a 718 million dollar loss so quite the turnaround there in q3 in terms of revenue we have a similar story up 70 percent to almost 7 billion 6.8 billion in Q3, up from just over 4 billion in Q2, which itself was up 17% from Q1. So revenue is just skyrocketing for Tesla here, which makes sense as the Model 3 gets out there. Gross profit, a similar case, up 146%. This is just over 1.5 billion, which is a huge jump from 619 million in Q2. Now, the interesting part is that cost of goods sold went up as well, but only by 56%. So your revenue goes up 70, but your cost of goods sold goes up 56. So this means that you're becoming more capital efficient. You had a growth here from 3.3 billion to 5.3 billion. So a pretty big jump, but compared to the other measures, not that large. Now, when it comes to SG&A, these are your overhead type expenses. They went down almost 3%, which is really good because they were at an all-time high. But R&D spending also went down, and this was actually a bigger jump, uh, over 9% decline. And this could be because maybe the lines and a lot of the work that they went into building the Model 3 line was spent here. And now that they've got that, they're pulling back a little bit. But hopefully, we can see actually an increase in this going forward, meaning that Tesla is going to continue to push the envelope with their products. And so that's just leaves us with wondering what's next what's on tesla's roadmap well there are a few things we know about first the model y this is the simplified version of their suv kind of what the model 3 is to the model s the model y will be to the model x we don't have any official specs on it yet or price elon has stated it will be priced similarly to the model 3 and we're hoping for an unveiling in more details in early 2019 they also have the semi-truck, and this we do know a lot about. With an acceleration of 0 to 60 miles per hour with an 80,000 pound load in 20 seconds, the Tesla Semi performs exceedingly well. It has a speed up a 5% grade of 60 miles per hour and a range between 3 to 500 miles. It has four independent motors on the rear axles, and it requires less than 2 kilowatt hours per mile. The fuel savings are estimated to be $200,000, and the base price of $150,000 make this an attractive option, one that we suspect thousands have already been pre-ordered from various companies around the world. Then, of course, we have the new Tesla Roadster, the next generation of the Tesla Roadster. This one promises some insane specs, a 0-60 to 60 time of 1.9 seconds, 0-100 to in 4.2 seconds, a quarter mile time of 8.8 .8 seconds with a top speed over 250 miles per hour and a range of 620 miles. This vehicle stands to become the overall champion in every performance spec compared to any other car in the production space. And then there's the China factory, which is already underway. They just recently secured the land in Shanghai. They're planning on using local financing so it won't burden the rest of the company. And they hope to have cars coming off the line in about three years. Originally, the goal will be 250,000 cars per year and then 500,000 a couple years after that. Overall, I think this is an amazing journey that we've been on here, watching Tesla grow from this small fledgling car company into somebody that's a major player in the auto sector and is really driving the adoption of electric vehicles around the world. Now that they've shown that they can make a profit, the next question will be, of course, can they do it again and then see how that plays out when they want to introduce new things like new models and all the other stuff we just talked about. So I'm curious what you guys think. Leave me a comment down below and don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll See you guys back here in the next one.